What is up my aesthetic boys, it's Fresh, back with another video. Today we have another revenge story time. Is it pro? Is it petty? I'll let you guys decide. You mess with my sleep? I'll send you back to the Stone Age. A little bit of background. I live in the Netherlands. I own an apartment in an older building. There are six apartments on three floors that share a stairwell and we all have a private storage in the basement as well as a larger shared space where most people put their bicycles. I live on the top floor. This happened a few years ago. The apartment below me was rented out to an Eastern European lady. She was a migration worker. She had lived there for almost a year with no problems whatsoever. In this period, I worked full time during weekdays and on a Saturday every few weeks. On Friday night and Saturday night, I had a side gig as a bouncer at a music venue. So basically, I worked a lot and definitely didn't make the recommended 8 hours of sleep during weekends. On Friday, as I come home at 3am for my bouncer gig, my downstairs neighbor is playing her music really, really loud. As in, I couldn't have a normal conversation in my living room without raising my voice. I figure she's having a party and think nothing of it. It happens from time to time and she had never caused any sort of problems, so I try to go to sleep. The music continues until 6 a.m. The next Saturday, as I come home at 3.30 a.m., same story. I figure, well, maybe she had people over from her country and they party all weekend. A bit annoying, but I shrug it off. The music continues until 6 a.m. again. Nothing happens during the week. Friday, I get home around 3.30 again. Loud music, louder than the week before. I rung the doorbell, knock on the door, but get no response. I start getting annoyed and decide to file a complaint with the local police. The lady at dispatch tells me it's a really busy night and they can't spare a unit to handle it. Annoyed, I try to get some sleep, but I can only fall asleep around 7am after the music has died down. Saturday, I get home around 4am. Loud music. No response to doorbell or knocking, so another call to the police. Busy night, yada yada, no units available. Music continues until 6.30 or so. During the week, nothing happens. Friday, loud music. No response to doorbells, no police available, hardly any sleep. Getting annoyed to the point of being willing to kick the door in and destroy their sound system, but I manage to restrain myself. Saturday, loud music. I start ringing the doorbell and knocking on the door for maybe 20 minutes and finally I get a response. Not the one I expected though. My neighbor yelled at me that she called the police. Seriously? I say, fine. That saves me the trouble of doing it. I move to the door at street level to await the police. They arrive in minutes. Eight of them, which I found a bit absurd. Turns out that my neighbor told the police that I kicked her door in, which I obviously didn't. The police agree with me 100% that the volume is completely unacceptable. Two officers go upstairs to set a maximum acceptable volume. My neighbor is completely wasted on alcohol and skunk, so the story is clear. Of course, as soon as the police leave, the volume goes up to the max again until early in the morning. Fast forward to next weekend. I get home on Friday around 3am and I have to work the next day. Music is loud as I expected. By now, I am frustrated to no end, but I decide against kicking in the door just yet. I know that the police won't show up for a minor complaint, so I think of another plan. Earlier that week, I had my electricity meter replaced due to a malfunction. The electrician did a nifty thing. He shut down the power supply to my apartment from the main fuse box which is in the basement. I saw him remove the seals, shut down power, and later switch the power back on and reseal the fuse box. He only used one seal though, so I managed to screw open the central fuse box and shut down the power to the apartment below me by removing the fuse. The silence was a feast to my ears. I went back upstairs and slept like a baby. I had every intention to place the fuse back the next day, but something came up and I forgot. I worked the door until late that Saturday and I just wanted to get some sleep as I wanted to go to an event on Sunday and had to leave early. I came home, looked up and saw the flickering of the candles they had lit because their light no longer worked. I felt a sense of accomplishment come over me as I went to sleep. Sunday morning, I left early and came home late. In front of the door below me, there was a trash bag filled with stuff from the freezer that obviously didn't work anymore. 
I went to sleep thinking I'd put the fuse back on Monday morning before I left for work. I forgot and eventually placed the fuse back Monday evening. I never heard them again, not even a slamming door. While I am a little surprised that the apartment never bothered to call an electrician or their landlord or anything to get the electricity fixed, at the same time, she also lied to police officers to try to get her upstairs neighbor arrested for something he didn't do, so how bright can they really be? Well, not super bright now with the lights off. Me and my friend's revenge on my r slash nice guy ex-boyfriend and his entitled parents. If you couldn't tell from the title, this will have a dash of entitled parents and nice guys. Great combo, right? A little backstory. I broke up with my boyfriend five months ago for a bunch of reasons. One of them being the fact that he would act like an entitled prick when he had the chance. Why did I date him in the first place, you ask? Well, since we were good friends, had a bunch of interests in common like art and gaming, and he was the first person to ask me out ever, I said yes. We dated for a while, but after realizing how insufferable his true colors were, I left him. Now on to the story. So he wasn't taking our breakup well. At all. He would leave nasty notes in my locker, bag, or even mailbox since he knew where I lived, but oh, that was only the tip of the iceberg. He would come up to me at school and loudly proclaim how much of a, and I quote, blind and stupid female dog I was for breaking the heart of someone as nice and good looking as himself. I wish I was kidding. Safe to say, me and my friends got sick of it pretty quickly, especially since he would interrupt us whenever we were talking so we could all listen to his high and mighty speeches. He would also ask everyone, out loud, at lunch, if they would want to see my nudes, which he didn't have since I never sent him any. This went on for a while. One time, when I was about to head home, I saw his dad waiting by his fancy sports car. Not big on cars, so I don't know what brand it was, but it did look really expensive waiting to pick him up. So I tried talking to him about what's been happening, hoping he would help me out. Spoiler alert, he didn't. He instead ignored everything I said and started going on a tirade about how sad I made his son and that I'm the reason he has depression. I was fuming but said nothing. Here comes the petty revenge part of this story. For reference, X is my complete ass of an ex. X's dad, also interpreted as Entitled Dad. X's mom, also interpreted as Entitled Mom. Zane, my best friend. Heaven, best friend sister. And me is me. After months of putting up with this, since going to the faculty of the school wouldn't solve anything, I did try, trust me, but they said they couldn't do anything about it. Zane came up to me one day saying that he did something pretty stupid, but that it would help my situation. Apparently, X had hit on his sister, Heaven, saying that he had always loved her and how he wants her as his girlfriend. Heaven turned him down and X went full out nice guy on her. Zayn, being the stereotypical overprotective older brother that he is, came up with a plan. The day after this had happened, we had a gym class. Now, since X is a super trashy person and leaves his things everywhere, even when he's in a guy's locker room, it was pretty easy for Zayn to find X's jacket which was thrown onto the floor. Mind you, that jacket was probably worth more than my whole closet. So Zane had taken a small pouch that was filled with God knows what, but had a terrible smell. Zane is a cat, so I assumed it was some rotting cat food or something like that, but he never told me what it actually was. So he placed that into the pocket of X's jacket along with a note saying, stay away from my sister and me. Good luck with the smell, which did explain the fact that both Zane and X smelled like death for a week, but Zane said it was worth it. However, it only kept X off mine and Heaven's back for a couple of weeks. After the smell of death was gone, he continued his routine, but worse, mostly for Heaven. He would keep up the normal bullying for me, but he would now try to grope her and send her a bunch of disgusting messages. Now onto the actual revenge part of the story. Me. Heaven and Zane came up with a revenge plan. Zane noticed that X would say lots of horrible things about me and Heaven even when he was in the boys' locker room, so he recorded it. Not only that, but he also recorded when X had his tirades about our breakup. Heaven managed to film him trying to grope her with the help of one of her friends, and also screenshotted the messages he sent her. And I talked to his parents, or more like getting yelled at and cussed out by them, when they told me, and I quote, 
he was justified to do those things, which I also recorded. Now, with all the proof we had, we went to the principal and managed to get a meeting, having the principal, me, Heaven, Zane, and X. The principal presented the issue, and X denied everything, but when it was our turn to talk, oh boy, <laughs> when it was our turn to talk, Zane and Heaven showed the recordings they had of him, but as we were doing that, the door burst open, incoming X's mom and dad. X's mom was shouting about how the principal didn't have the right to hold her son for this, and that they had to go somewhere or something like that. I couldn't really care. But when they went on a rant about how they did so much for this school and how they are such nice people and all the proof we had was somehow fake, I showed the recordings of them cussing me out and saying how their son was justified. Now I wish I could have stayed around to see the faces of the parents when the principal called them out on their BS, but he told me, Heaven, and Zane to get out. However, as we were laughing to ourselves in the hall, we heard some stuff along the lines of, You were lying to me about these events, and X will be suspended until I figure out everything else you've been lying about. Later though, I found out that X's parents actually donated a big amount to the school which was pretty much saying, let my son pass his classes even though he has bad grades, but was officially deemed as a donation. Since the principal didn't want to take any more of this, he decided to suspend X from coming to school for the rest of the year and him having to stay back a year. Now, since my school is separated into two campuses, my class will be moving to that other campus next year while he will be staying at this one, but knowing his parents, they would probably have him move schools. However, I won't have to deal with him anymore, or at least for a long time. This happened a month ago, and ever since then, I haven't heard anything from X. Heaven got a boyfriend, which Zane did an FBI-style check on, and Zane also confessed to me, which was nice, but since I just got out of that, I decided to take things slow and not put a label on it yet. So things ended up pretty great, but I learned that you never know someone's true colors unless you are really close friends, date, and then break up, I guess. Alright, I know what you're thinking, yes, there's not a chance that this story wasn't embellished. To what extent, I'm not exactly sure. But if you think that this couldn't be based in reality, you're on something else. I'm sure that many high schoolers had this exact same experience, but I knew for a fact of a similar situation that happened when I was in high school. A situation in which a messy breakup led to stalking, possible sexual harassment, and a whole slew of other things that were wildly inappropriate for school and life in general. High school boys can be pretty messed up. Not that high school girls can't also be messed up, but damn, sometimes high school boys can be pretty messed up. No school principal post for you. I was in high school, 10th grade in the US, so I'm about 16, and I had recently made friends with a guy named Mario from a class project we'd been given. Background. I grew up in the inner city during the 1990s, so figure if you were in DC, New York, or any familiar East Coast city. Anyhow, since this was a public school, teachers and admins don't really care about us other than making sure we are not stabbing and shooting each other. Since me and Mario came from low income and welfare backgrounds, we really didn't have nice things. I did my share of shame, but I never stole from anybody. One day, we have a big school assembly for a speaker who survived a motorcycle accident. It was fun to get out of class for two periods, so at the end of the assembly, I was leaving and Mario called out to me and asked to grab his jacket as he left it on the chair. Me, without thinking, grabbed it and gave it to him. Cue a couple of weeks later and I had to go to the counselor to get a record for my PSAT. The vice principal, or VP at the time, was there as her office was next to my counselor and she stopped me and asked about a stolen jacket. I was scared out of my mind because I did not steal anybody's jacket and she told me I was facing expulsion for stealing another student's jacket. At this time, I was on track for some academic scholarship and was scared out of my mind for this. She brought me to the room where they kept troubled kids and I was pointed out by another student as taking a jacket a while back and then it dawned on me. Mario had me pass the jacket to him. I tried to explain the situation that my friend said it was his, and so I grabbed it and gave it to him. I didn't know it was another student's. I gave Mario's name to sort out the situation, and he came clean and told the vice principal I didn't know. However, this VP didn't like me, probably because of the fact that this dark-skinned kid was working towards winning this academic scholarship that usually a white student won. So what did she do? She told me to bring my mom in the next day. 
My mom did not speak English, by the way, and a punishment was to be handed out. Not only did I get an ass beating when I got home, but now I needed to bring my mom to school who did not even understand the situation. Without any way to defend myself, the VP without mercy suspended me for a week and put it on my record. I cried, I was so upset. This woman basically tried to mess up my life and rather wanted me to fall into the life of gangs and crime people of my kind were susceptible to. Long story short, I took the week off and came back ready to fight back towards winning the scholarship. Senior year, I win the scholarship anyway and got a four year ride for college and put the experience behind me, or so I thought. Two weeks before graduation, I was asked to sit on a selection committee for the vacated principal post. I was selected because of my studies and also personal background. Google Cambodia and you can imagine what my parents went through. There was a CV packet of a name. It was the name of the VP a couple years back who gave me no leniency. I read her cover letter and she wrote about caring about students, choices we make in admin roles have a profound effect on children and all the usual garbage. Oh, and she wrote she knew the school very well and the students there. Game on. When she came in, she did not recognize who I was, so I played it coy and let her speak and then it was time for us to ask questions. Guess what I asked? I asked her, if a student got into something, my situation, would you punish the student to the max? And if she ever faced something like this before, this woman said she would fully investigate and if the student was indeed unaware and was a good student, there would be no need to be that extreme. Also, she noted luckily she never had to face a situation like that. I then asked her, does she recognize me? She genuinely didn't, so I told the group of what had happened to me with her and gave them copies of the report she signed. Her face dropped and I don't recall what else happened, but the questioning continued until she was dismissed. In our deliberation, they were vouching for her, but I was adamant in my no vote and we ended up giving the post to the acting principal. Don't know what happened to her since, but Mario, last I heard, went back to Puerto Rico and I went to college, grad school, now ABD and interning as a civil employee. This is another post that, while it seems like it was kind of exaggerated in some circumstances, seems to genuinely be based in reality, or at the very least is a little bit too plausible. I certainly had multiple issues with multiple administrators when I was in high school and how they genuinely didn't care about most of the students and would often come up with a wide variety of ridiculous excuses as to why they couldn't help a person in a certain situation. Now that's not to say that all school administrators are bad. There are plenty that are great and love their job and do their best every day to help out the student body. But this story is just emblematic of the absolute effect that some of these administrators have on students and how little the students have in return. This woman did something that could have drastically changed this man's course of life, but when it came down to it only a couple years later, she had no clue who he was. She certainly did not deserve that job post. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. Be sure to subscribe for more daily Reddit content. Drop a like if you like the video, and I will see you all tomorrow.